this video we'll be looking at how you can create quantitative charts using the Snow Infographic Builder, which is part of the larger Snow Site Booster add-on um, that clients can subscribe to. So if your school does subscribe to that add-on, you can access this Snow Infographics Builder by scrolling along the left in the back end of your site and clicking on the Snow Infographics tab. Once you're there, to create a new infographic, simply click Add New at the top. When you click on that right away, you're going to be prompted to select the type of infographic that you want to create. So if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see the two types of charts um, or maps that you can utilize. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be using the USA chart, but the world chart would work exactly the same way. And once you click continue, now you're going to be prompted to select which type of data you're going to add to your map. So you have two options here. You can create a qualitative map where your data would be word-based, or you can create a quantitative map where your data would be number-based. For this video, I'm going to create a map that shows the number of COVID cases in each state in the United States um, over a seven day time span. Um, so my data is going to be the number of cases per state, so it's quantitative. So I'm going to select quantitative and click continue. All right, so now I have fields that I can actually start filling out and entering my data into. I'm going to start with my infographic title. I'm going to title this US Quantitative Chart. All right, as you scroll down, you'll see there's a field that corresponds to each state in the US. So you have two options here when it comes to entering your data. You can either enter it in manually just by typing your data into each field, or to save yourself some time, if you happen to have your data um, compiled in a CSV file, you can import that file um, and pre-fill all of those fields at once. So I am gonna do that so we can see what this process looks like. To do that, I'm just going to click on Import CSV File here. You'll notice we give you a couple of tips on formatting your CSV file. We also give you one that you can download and utilize that is pre-formatted if you like. Um, but I'm, I already have one on my computer, so I'm just going to go to Choose File, and I'm going to select it from my desktop. You'll notice if your CSV file is properly formatted. Um, it imports pretty quickly. You may have noticed there was a little message in the bottom right corner saying that the CSV file was successfully imported and all of your data should automatically be filled in um, according to each state. It looks like my CSV file happened to be missing some data for Alabama, so I'm just going to enter that in here. And you can also title your data set. So I'm going to title mine number of cases. Let's say you happened to have two data sets or more than one. For example, maybe I was going to track the number of cases um, across two different weeks, so I would have two data sets. You can add your second data set by clicking this blue button at the top here, and then again, entering all of your data in the corresponding column. You unfortunately can't attach two CSV files to a chart, so any additional data sets, the data would need to be entered manually. All right, so now I've got my data added. So if we continue scrolling down on this page, now you get to actually see what the chart will look like and play around more with the design of it. There are different um, design categories that correspond to these tabs along the left in blue. So we'll just go through those briefly. Under general, you'll see you can set a fill color for states without data. So for example, maybe I'll set this as yellow. You can see that nothing changed on the right over here, which is good. That's an indication that all of my states have data in them. 
You can also change the border color with opacity, you can turn on state labels, and you can turn on different highlighting effects. The next category here has to do with overlays. When we use the term overlay, that refers to this gray box we're seeing right now, um, which actually is gonna show the numerical data that corresponds to each state. So you can choose to turn it on or off. You can change the background color, border color, etc. You will notice right now, when I hover over these states, the numbers aren't actually showing up yet. So this is a bit of a glitch. If you notice it happening, you'll want to come to this little box at the bottom of the overlays tab and just toggle amongst your data sets until you see them start to show up. So Still not showing up when I toggle to my second data set, but when I toggle back, now I can see that number. So sometimes you just have to toggle to get the data to actually register within the infographic builder. All right, the next tab down here we have is titles. This refers to the title at the top of the chart. Um, so I'm gonna title my chart U.S. COVID-19 seven-day case rate. Per 100,000 people by state. Once you finish typing and click outside of that field, you'll see the title appear on the right. Maybe I want the title to be really large. can change the color. You can also add a subtitle. So in my case, I do want to add a subtitle because I want to specify what seven day period my data is based on. So I'm going to turn this on and add my subtitle. Data as of December 7th, 2021. And you can style the subtitle as well. All right, the last tab we have here is legend. Legend refers to this area in the bottom left corner, which gives you a sense of which color corresponds with which numerical value. So if I click into this, I can title my legend. Oops. So I'm gonna title it seven day case rate. You can also have a legend subtitle if you like. For now, I'm going to turn it off. So now we're at the last step here, which is the fun part, getting to choose the colors for your chart. Um, when you click into number of cases here under data set options, you'll see the colors that are used. So the first thing to note is you have two types of color mapping that you can opt from. Um, so the first is a range of colors. When we use the term range, that means you have these different boxes of colors. So right now I have five different sections within my color range. Your other option here, if you click on gradient type, is continuous. That turns those colors into more of a constant spectrum, so they're no longer as blocked. Um, off, they are just one smooth line that is more of a spectrum. So I'm going to go back to range. Currently my two colors are pink and blue. There are five different sections being based on those colors, but I could also add a third color if I like. You can add a third color by clicking gradient color and selecting the color here. So maybe I'll do, uh, maybe I'll do green. And also, maybe I want there to be more than five sections, so I could bump that all the way up to 10, and you'll see then we have more of a numbered um, uh, spectrum along the bottom here with those different sections. Now I have 10, and they correspond to numbers below in my legend. 
The final step once you're done creating your quantitative chart is to make sure you save your work. So to do that, you're just going to scroll all the way back up to the top of this page and either click Save Draft or Publish. And then you're set to embed that chart into a story or a widget on your website. So that's how you can create quantitative charts using the SNOW Infographic Builder. And as always, if you have questions during that process, don't hesitate to reach out to us at SNOW Support.